All right, welcome back to Dave's Garage 249. I'm Dave. In this video, we're going to look at that 57 Chevy model gasser by MTC that we started a long time ago. Now we're picking back up on it, doing some masking, some repaint, and moving that project along. And also, we're going to take a look at the 1 1 scale model Chevelle, the 68 Chevelle, which I'm sitting in front of right now. Uh, my dad always accused me of building model cars there, but did some painting and detailing on uh, brake calipers. And that's the, what we got going on here at Dave's Garage 249 today for you. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video. Let's get with it. <laughs> Something on the 1 1 scale model car is uh, Wildwood rear disc. These things, uh, we rebuilt them a couple of years ago, so they're in good shape, but they're just never had time to clean them up and make them look pretty. So we're going to do some paint on that. Uh, lug nuts have been rebuffed, so uh, those are the small little details that make a car extra sharp looking and I'll show you the end results of the paint. Okay, I'm using this product right here, uh, Duplicolor Caliper Paint, uh, enamel with ceramic. It says to put on very light coats, space them about 10 minutes apart, and you will get good results, and the instructions are exactly correct. So in this case, rather than remove the calipers and re-bleed the brakes and everything, I have did some fairly intricate masking. And that's uh, first coat, looks pretty good. We'll get the second coat on here in a couple seconds. We'll do just what they say and wait to 10 minutes. So there you have it. Uh, that's the second coat. I may not even put a third coat on. It says that this will dry to the touch in three hours. So in about three hours, I'll do the unmasking and start masking the other side and get that one done. It's done on the car. Uh, Looks pretty good to me. Um, I, I might detail the word Wildwood on there uh, with some black paint or maybe uh, scrub the paint off of that and polish it a little bit. I haven't decided yet, but it's a good product. Works real well. Calipers look really, really nice. So I'm real happy. Thanks for looking at that. All right, so let's get back to the 57 Chevy Gasser project. Let's kind of review real quick. Uh, resin uh, big block kit that uh, I got offline. Uh, kind of re redid the roll bar with a little bit more scale material. And the body, we had a paint job fail. Uh, when I went to clear coat, the clear coat just lifted the Tamiya paint. So I'm not sure how to proceed other than I stripped it all down, uh, reshot it, uh, reprimed it, reblocked it and uh, it came out okay and then I just kind of knocked it all down with some 2000 grit so the next step is is to mask these uh, spears and uh, so here's the masking method I use this fine uh, it's inexpensive pinstriping tape for the uh, clean edges and then I open it up with uh, this tape next then I cover everything from there so uh, it's, so far it's done real well, so I'm going to go ahead and mask this up. I won't make you sit and watch that. And then we'll shoot the uh, silver. I've got a Tamiya uh, silver paint. Do the spears and the uh, rear quarter trim with that. So I'll get busy. Okay, so here's step one of the masking process. The spears and the panels are masked. First with the 1 8 inch wide white vinyl tape, which is it's kind of an inexpensive pinstriping tape, but so far it has given me extremely clean lines when I unmask. Then the next is the quarter inch wide tape, and you can see I've kind of got a nice overlap. And uh, make sure that uh, like the final result will be to take uh, 
back side of the X-Acto blade and tuck the tape down into the door gaps so you don't have that uh, spray in the door gaps. Uh, so that'll be one side, that'll be the other. So I'll finish masking it up and get the paint booth out and set up and then uh, lay some silver on there. All right, we got masking completed. Got the little paint booth out, warmed up, got my parts going. And I'm gonna use the Tamiya uh, Silver. It's a kind of aluminum, I'm warming the can up. It's about 60, what, 62 degrees here in the garage. We'll get the can kind of warm, that kind of raises the pressure and gets you a nice fine mist. So uh, airbrushing is appropriate sometimes and sometimes you can do just as well just by simply using the uh, rattle can. So that's how I work it. So in a couple minutes I'll shoot it and then uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes after that we'll start tearing the masking off hoping it doesn't lift the paint. <laughs> that's always the risk you run when you do masking is that you lift uh, some of the paint that you didn't want to remove. Back over to the wheels on the Chevelle. These are 15 by 15 with a four and a half inch backspace. They were kind of tarnished and they had a lot of dings from people taking the lug nuts off and dropping them inside, the, which is easy to do. I've done it myself. But what I do is I put a piece of cardboard in before I remove the lug nuts. So if it does fall, it falls on the cardboard. So what I had to do to clean these wheels up, and they're still not perfect, but I had to wet sand them and then each individual dent kind of feather it out and uh, sand it and, and keep using finer and finer paper and then finally a final polish. So that uh, gets them back to looking pretty darn decent. Then uh, buff lug nuts and the detail with the brake caliper and uh, clean up the tire. Now these tires are probably 20 years old and they're not really worn, but I don't really trust them and they're actually a little too wide for the car, I think. They lo it looks cool though, because you've got the steamroller effect when you take a picture from the back, but I'm looking for something on the order of a 1432 stiff sidewall slick. That's what I think I'm gonna put on, and if I can get cheater slicks or something that's a dot slick, that's even better. Uh, you kinda need the stiff sidewalls because when you drive on the street, you turn a corner, uh, if you got soft sidewalls, not good. So that's kind of the route we're looking at. They do not do not make these Sportsman Pro anymore. When they're new and less than a year or so old, they stick pretty good. And they're also fairly safe in the rain, but they don't make them anymore. So uh, Hoosier has a quick time, but they don't have it in this size or anything close to this size. So that's another uh, project and another thousand dollars that I'm gonna have to throw at this car to make it right. but that's what you have to do so okay uh, painting the silver on the sides of the 57 Chevy Gasser model this is what I used uh, Hobby Lobby and it, it was 40% off so uh, give it a try and let's see what it looks like on the car looks pretty good it's uh, got kind of a nice uh, lumini shiny look to it did not lift or crawl the paint underneath. It's got good coverage. I think it's going to look good. So we'll unmask it in a few minutes and see what we get. So I've pulled all the masking off and here is the end result. You can see we've got some pretty crisp, uh, the lighting isn't the very best, but uh, very crisp spears, uh, aluminum firewall, got some good crisp masking, uh, at best maybe touch up, I don't know, I don't really see anything that's really worth touching up uh, too awful much. So the next step on this model will be, I will use a Molotow chrome pen to do the chrome trim around the windows and the glass and any decals that I want to put on. And then uh, we'll get some clear coat on, which is where I ran into trouble last time. So there's uh, 
Alignment's fairly good on the the spears. That, uh, as opposed to not putting that trim on, that really adds a lot of uh, depth to this uh, model. Um, really makes a big difference, I think. Well worth doing. Turned out good. I'm happy. I hope that you enjoyed watching this segment of the video and maybe you learned something and if you want to make some comments maybe you could teach me something so uh, we'll move onward with this kit and get this thing finished up it's gonna look good on the shelf so as with everything else I'm always thinking about what's next what's the next thing well provided we can get the clear on this without any difficulty I'm gonna be pretty careful about that May, it may just put a furniture polish on it, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I have a stash of model kits. Uh, here's some of my old kits. Uh, what I've been doing is I've been kind of, it's just, I, I'll never build them all. And so I'm just keeping the, uh, the old uh, 60s, 50s kits, stuff that means something to me as I was a kid. And I've sold about 35 kits on eBay in the past couple months. And let's see here, we got, what model car kits have we got stashed here? Um, probably won't do the Volkswagen Beetle. The Henry J looks like it might be kind of fun. I really kind of, right now, just enjoy doing the gasser kits. Uh, I've got these. The, uh, the Mad Magazine one has just a... a decal that just is just awesome. Uh, I'm not sure I want to do that. The Shoemaker Funny Car Kit, uh, picked that up, uh, picked up cases of those back when I was dealing kits and kept one or two for myself. This kit here uh, by Lindbergh, one of their better model car kits in my opinion. That one kind of is on a bucket list. The Little Red Wagon, a really nice kit. Uh, we'll see. Let's uh, take a look and see what else I got in the stash. I don't know. I suspect I'm probably not the only guy that does this, but uh, here's my my closet. It drives my wife crazy. But I've got uh, kits stashed all over the house, and <laughs> she's just like constantly kind of like, "Where are you putting that kit?" So, <laughs> but I've got some other options up here. I uh, kind of like that Melco Gasser kit too. I was thinking that might be the next one. Um, I also like 148 scale World War II planes, so I kind of have kept back what I think are the better kits to build of each one. Um, so these will give me something to do. Uh, I have uh, more truck kits down here and uh, some more kits stashed back here. And uh, the one here that I, I think will be kind of a bucket list thing is this 67 Corvette Stingray. Uh, that would be a all winter long project. Mobius came out with this Golden Commandos kit and I know I'm gonna build that. That's gonna look really nice. And I always thought about building the DM800 with a, a pair of these gravel trailers and make a Michigan train. So what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? Bull, construction bulldozer, which is the Cat D8, which, you know, licensing with Cat, uh, I don't know, I don't think much of their, you know, licensing crap that Ford and all those guys do. That's just, I don't know, greedy, I think. So uh, comments, uh, what's it going to be? It's probably going to be a gasser kit, I can tell you that. So. Take a look and see what you think. I've got other kits stashed all over the place too. So tell me what you think. All right, back on the 1 1 model car project, the 68 Chevelle Pro Street. Unmask the caliper. This is the result. Uh, I like it. Uh, just needed to touch up a little bit with a q tip with some lacquer thinner. Just uh, kind of crisp things up a little bit, a little bit of overspray here and there, nothing, no, nothing big, no, nothing all over the chassis or anything like that. Just, uh, just some little spots that just made it look a little bit more crispy. So we'll go over and do the other side next. I, I can put this wheel and tire back on. 
I cleaned these fender wells too while I was at it with some lacquer thinner and elbow grease and got the years worth of road crap. And uh, here's a little evidence that at one time this thing had maybe some bigger slicks on it. And I know that uh, they ran it on the street down in Oklahoma somewhere, uh, street racing this car with nitrous. When I bought it, it had two nitrous kits and it actually had two fuel pumps. One of them wasn't being used anymore. And uh, the other one I had to change out right away. So, but it looks like they had some tire growth issues there. <laughs> so that just won't come off. Uh, that's how you pick up on history of these cars is look, look for weird things like that. Oh yeah, there's something that happened a long time ago. So things are shaping up pretty good on the back side of this car. It was a just an oil covered, grease covered mess when I bought it. So I'm happy. Well, I really need to write a script for this stuff. I don't know. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. That's, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, we're going to move on with more car stuff on the next video and more model stuff. I've asked you to uh, give me some feedback on what should be the next model car. And I'm looking for kind of down the road uh, another project to, uh, for the garage as far as a real car. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I just have a blast doing these things. So uh, enjoy it. So please join me for the next one. Thanks.